Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about depression. Before I start, I've been thinking of what would I do if I'm getting ready to end doing these podcasts. And looking back at the channel, like what would I do if I wanted to not have regrets, you know? We don't know how much time we have on this earth. And with things that are going on in my life, I might want to cut out the time and, you know, it takes to do the podcast. So, it wasn't movies or TV shows that um, I look back on and said, oh, you know what, what am I going to, you know, do next? Or am I going to, you know, think about it all the time? Oh, this movie's coming out that I didn't do one on this movie. But what I started realizing is I, I had never did a... Um, I don't know, let's, let's call it a series on mental disorders or mental illness. So I figured if I'm going to end the podcast and walk away from it for a time or maybe forever, would I, what would I not have any regrets about? And looking back at my mental health issues, and I've done here and there lots of topics on mental health, and it's part of the, the playlist and the wellness or whatever. However, this time I thought I'd attack the five or nine um, mental health issues and give them all their one little podcast. And then I feel like if I walked away, I wouldn't have many regrets. So, like I said, this will probably be five separate or nine separate podcasts. We'll follow mostly the same formula. It'll be an article I read word for word, most likely injecting a little of my two cents into it. And I leave the link to the article in the description. If I forget, let me know. So, as I ramp up to start doing this, the list of mental health issues or mental disorders is, you know, it, it grows. And it's got offshoots and, like, subsets. But I think if I do five or nine of them, you know, in that sense, and maybe I'll do movie stuff in between. I'm not totally against it. That at least there'd be a body of work there, or, you know, not work, you know, whatever this fucking thing is. But it maybe would help people in the future. So, that was always the goal in the start of the channel with my fiance when we started coming up with ideas. And, um, you know, it didn't work out in the long run in that sense. But what would I leave behind? And I'd like to get these out of the way, and who knows what'll happen. So, like I said, today I'm going to be talking about depression. And it's going to be from a site called the National Institute of Mental Health. So again, I'll read the article, most likely word for word. I inject my thing, you know, here and there. Then I'll put the link in the description of my video when I upload it to YouTube. And this should be something like next week I'll probably do schizophrenia or bipolar disorder and things like that. Although, lots of these things connect, so I might... You know, instead of doing nine, I might do five because they overlap. But we'll see how it goes. And like I said, today I'll start with depression. Uh, hold on. Let me see if there's a person who wrote the article and I can give credit to. I'd like to get that over first, but it wasn't at the top, which was rare. So maybe this is just, um, you know, a source for, you know, health institute. They're not going to give all right, so I don't see nothing yet. If I come across anybody who gets credit for this, I'll try to post, you know, I'll, I'll mention it. So we've got depression. What is depression? Depression, also known as major depression, major depressive disorder, or clinical depression, is a common but serious mood disorder. It causes severe symptoms that affect how a person feels, thinks, and handles daily activities, such as sleeping, eating, or working. To be diagnosed with depression, the, system, the symptoms must be present for at least two weeks. There are different types of depression, some of which develop due to specific circumstances. Major depression includes symptoms of depressed mood or loss of interest most of the time for at least two weeks that interfere with daily activities. Persistent depressive disorder, also called dysmia, this, oh, this is great, because, you know, I murder the English language, but, um, this myth, the, uh, 
disorder consists of less severe symptoms of depression that last much longer, usually for at least two years. Perennial depression is depression that occurs during or after pregnancy. Depression that begins during pregnancy is prenatal depression, and depression that begins after the baby is born is postpartum depression. Seasonal affective disorder is depression that comes and goes with the seasons, with symptoms typically starting in the late fall and early winter and going away during the spring and summer. Depression with symptoms of psychosis. It's a severe form of depression in which a person experiences psychosis symptoms, such as delusions, parentheses, disturbing, false, fixed beliefs, or hallucinations, hearing or seeing things others do not hear or see. People with bipolar disorder, formerly called manic depression or manic depressive illness, also experience depressive episodes, during which they feel sad, indifferent, or hopeless, combined with a very low activity level. But a person with bipolar disorder also experiences manic or less severe hyp <laughs> hypnomanic episodes or unusually elevated moods in which they might feel very happy, irritable, or up with a marked increase in activity level. Other types of depressive disorders found in the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders, the 5th edition, include Disruptive Mood Dysregulation Disorder, Diagnosing Children and Adolescents, and Premenstrual Dysphoric Disorder that affects women around the time of their period. Who gets depression? Depression can affect people of all ages, races, ethnicities, and genders. Women are diagnosed with depression more often than men. But men can also be depressed. Because men may be less likely to recognize, talk about, and seek help for their feelings or emotional problems, they are at greater risk of depression symptoms being undiagnosed or untreated. Studies also show higher rates of depression and an increased risk of the disorder among members of the LGBTQ community. Is it new now? QIA community. What are the signs and symptoms of depression? If you have been experiencing some of the following signs or symptoms most of the day, nearly every day, for at least two weeks, you may be suffering from depression. Here they go. Persistent, sad, anxious, or empty mood. Feelings of hopelessness or pessimism. Feelings of irritability, frustration, or restlessness. Feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or helplessness. Loss of interest or pleasure in hobbies and activities. Decreased energy, fatigue, or feeling slowed down. Difficulty concentrating, remembering, or making decisions. Difficulty sleeping, waking early in the morning, or oversleeping. Changes in appetite or unplanned weight changes. Physical aches or pains. Headaches, cramps, digestive problems that do not have a clear physical cause and do not go away with treatment. Thoughts of death or suicide or suicide attempts. Not everyone who is depressed experiences every one of these symptoms. Some people may experience only a few symptoms, while others experience many symptoms. Symptoms associated with depression interfere with the day-to-day -day functioning and cause significant distress for the person experiencing them. Depression can also involve other changes in mood and behavior that include increased anger or irritability, feeling restless or on edge, becoming withdrawn, negative, or detached, increased engagement in high-risk activities, greater impulsivity, increased use of alcohol or drugs, isolating from friends and family, inability to meet the responsibilities of work and family or ignoring other important roles, problems with sexual desire and performance. Depression can look different in men and women. Although men and women and people of all genders can feel depressed, how they express those symptoms and behaviors they use to cope with them may differ. For example, some men as well as women may show symptoms other than sadness, instead seem angry or irritable. And although increased use of alcohol or drugs can be a coping strategy for any person with depression, maybe men may be more likely to use alcohol or drugs to help them cope. In some cases, mental health symptoms appear as physical problems. For example, a racing heart, a tightened chest, ongoing headaches, or digestive issues. Men are often more likely to see a healthcare provider about these physical symptoms than their emotional ones. That's interesting. Because depression tends to make people think more negatively about themselves and the world, 
Some people may also have thoughts of suicide or self-harm. Several persistent symptoms, in addition to low mood, are required for a diagnosis of depression, but people with only a few symptoms may also benefit from treatment. The severity and frequency of symptoms and how long they last will vary depending on the person, the illness, and the stage of the illness. If you experience signs or symptoms of depression and they persist or do not go away, talk to a healthcare provider. If you see signs or symptoms of depression in someone you know, encourage them to seek help from a mental health professional. What are the risk factors for depression? Depression is one of the most common men mental disorders in the United States. Research suggests that genetic, biological, environmental, and psychological factors play a role in depression. <laughs> yeah. Took them long enough to come to that. Right? Depression can happen at any age, but it often begins in adulthood. Depression is now recognized as occurring in children and adolescents, although children may express more irritability than sadness. Many chronic mood and anxiety disorders anxiety disorders in adults begin as high levels of anxiety in childhood. Depression, especially in middle or older age, can co-occur with other serious medical illnesses, such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and Parkinson's disease. These conditions are often worse than depression, is often worse when depression is present, and research suggests that people with depression and other medical illnesses tend to have more severe symptoms of both illnesses. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, has also recognized that having certain mental disorder, including depression or schizophrenia, can make people more likely to get severely ill from COVID. Sometimes a physical health problem, such as thyroid disease, or medications taken for physical illness can cause side effects that contribute to depression. A healthcare provider experienced in treating these complicated illnesses can help work out the best treatment strategy. And then there's a thing, help learn more, and there's a blue link. Other risk factors for depression include personal or family history of depression, major negative life changes, trauma, or stress. So I want to make it clear, in these articles, there are blue highlighted links, and when you're talking about topics, you can hit these links, which will further give you information on that topic. And it's a great way to keep um, opening up your ideas and learning things, taking it step by step. You read the article, you may want to go back again and see that blue highlighted word or sentence, and you'll be able to, you know, go see what the CDC is about getting help and finding a healthcare provider. Anyway, I'll continue. How is depression treated? How is depression treated? <laughs> depression, even the most severe cases, can be treated. The earlier treatment begins, the more effective it is. Depression is usually treated with medication, psychotherapy, or a combination of the two. <sighs> Some people may experience treatment-resistant depression, which occurs when a person does not get better after trying at least two antidepressant medications. If treatments like medication and psychotherapy do not reduce depressive symptoms or the need for rapid relief from symptoms is urgent, brain stimulation therapy may be an option to explore. And by the way, in blue highlighted are medication, psychotherapy, and brain stimulation therapy. So you can go right now, you hit that blue link, and it shows you brain stimulation therapy. This is why I love some of these articles, and it helps you keep taking steps and finding out more information. All right. Uh, quick tip. No two people are affected the same way by depression, and there is no one-size-fits-all treatment. Finding the treatment that works best for you may take trial and error. Medications. Antidepressants are medications commonly used to treat depression. They work by changing how the brain produces or uses certain chemicals involved in mood or stress. You may need to try several different antidepressants before finding the one that improves your symptoms and has a manageable side effect, or has manageable side effects. A medication that has helped you or a close family member in the past will also, oh, in the past will often be considered first. Antidepressants take time, usually four to eight weeks to work, and problems with sleep, appetite, and concentration often improve before mood lifts. 
it is important to give a medication a chance to work before deciding whether it's the right one for you. New medications such as intransinal esketamine, <laughs> okay, esketamine, can have rapidly a acting antidepressant effects, especially for people with treatment resistant depression. Esketamine is a medication approved by the U.S. and Foods and Drug Administration for treatment resistant depression, delivered as a nasal spray in a doctor's office, clinic, or hospital. It acts rapidly typically within a couple of hours to relieve depression symptoms. People who have used esketamine will usually continue taking an oral antidepressant to maintain the improvement in their symptoms. Another option for treatment-resistant depression is to take an antidepressant alongside a different type of medication that may make, that may make the antidepressant more effective, such as an antipsychotic or anti Convulsant medication. Further research is needed to identify the best role of these newer medications in routine practice. If you begin taking an antidepressant, do not stay, do not stop taking it without talking to a healthcare provider. And that's very important. It's super in black. If you begin taking an antidepressant, do not stop taking it without talking to a healthcare provider. Sometimes people taking antidepressants feel better and stop taking the medications on their own, and their depressive symptoms return. When you and your healthcare provider have decided it's time to stop a medication, usually after a course of 9 to 12 months, the provider will help you slowly and safely decrease your dose. Abruptly stopping a medication can cause withdrawal symptoms. Note. In some cases, children, teenagers, and young adults under 25 years may experience an increase in suicidal thoughts or behavior when taking antidepressants, especially in the first few weeks of after or starting when the dose is changed. The FDA advises that patients of all ages taking antidepressants be watched closely, especially during the first few weeks of treatment. If you are considering taking an antidepressant or, and are pregnant, planning to become pregnant, or breastfeeding, Talk to a healthcare provider about any health risk to you or your unborn or nursing child, and how to weigh the risk against the benefits of available treatment options. To find the latest information about antidepressants, talk to a healthcare provider and visit the FDA website. Now, this is an area I have a problem with, and it comes from maybe being 52, having you know a certain amount of life experiences, and trying to keep up with science and all this, you know, all the information. It looks like treating symptoms, and this is not just for depression, because all these symptoms can be interconnected, schizophrenia. The main thing is when you start them, don't get off them unless you talk to your doctor and you work through it. But a lot of research is showing that it's more damaging than they thought. Meaning, this cocktail of what they're giving you and how it works it needs to be worked on from both sides, the doctor and the patient. So, where does that leave certain people? Well, me for instance, it's not one of medication and going and getting certain cocktails and doses. It might have been that in the beginning. But over years and time, I have other tools at my disposal, but it is very serious. It's something that you should be discussing with your healthcare provider in any case where you have a friend or so-and-so. I'll continue. Psychotherapies. Several types of psychotherapies, also called talk therapy or counseling, can help people with depression by teaching them the new ways of thinking and behaving and how to change habits that contribute to depression. Evidence-based approaches to treating depression include cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and interpersonal therapy, IPT. Learn more about psychotherapy, and there's a blue link. The growth of telehealth and mental health services, which offers an alternative to in-person therapy, has made it easier and more convenient for people to access care in some cases. For people who have may been hesitant to look for mental health care in the past, Telemental health services might be an easier first step than traditional mental health services. 
Now, this is why I've spent so much time learning and studying cognitive behavior therapy. Because for me, to understand human behavior in the brain, and to just go through life realizing that having a friend to talk to and listen to helps. So if we can get that out of the way and go, what about a friend who has learned about psychotherapies and cognitive behavior therapies and that type of thing? Well, that would be even more helpful. Now, granted, if that person gets a degree and he's just like, all right, so we get where that goes. But learning about this yourself, uh, being interested in how cognitive behavior works and uh, therapy works and how it teaches you to create new connective synapses in the brain and with time and for me, me meditation and practice and breathing exercises, you can keep ahead of the symptoms, you can regulate things better, and in times of severe depression and <clears throat> when new things happen, because things happen in life, traumas, unexpected deaths and serious financial and health issues, like it all it happens to everybody. Learning how to deal with this, getting informed is like a first step and now with telemed, think about the age we're in with the pandemic and stuff. I totally recommend using these services. I understand people not want to take medication or going to a doctor, or sitting there. I'm going to look. Here's my first ever and only visit to a psychiatrist. It was after my friend killed himself in front of me and my other friends. And I'm in the, uh, I go there <laughs> and I sit down. And, you know, we do the thing, <clears throat> we're talking, and by the way, as it's happening, I had already, because by the time that happened, I would already, had already learned all I could at the time, because my mom had mental health issues, so. So as I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him, I won't get into the miniature of everything, but when it ended, I got up and was ready to leave, and he stopped me and he goes, you're not ever coming back, are you? And I smiled and I was like, no, I'm not. And it was that recognition that that um, he already sized me up, and when we talked about things, he gave me one bit of advice, and that was it. However, I didn't listen to it, technically, so, but it was a recognition that I am a certain way and a certain person, and I'm going to deal with things in a certain way. I understand all the options at my disposal. I know some of the, or most of these, you know, side effects, and, th you know, the, the threats that come with all these things, the warning signs, and all that. And that was really it. But anyway, I'll continue. Brain stimulation therapies. If medication, if medication or psychotherapy does not reduce symptoms of depression, brain stimulation therapy may be an option to explore. There are now several types of brain stimulation therapy, some of which has been authorized by the FDA to, pre, to, to treat depression. Other brain stimulation therapies are experimental and still being investigated for treating mental disorders like depression. Although brain stimulation therapies are less frequently used in medication and psychotherapy, they can play an important role in treating mental disorders in people who do not respond to other treatments. These therapies are used for more for the most mental disorder. Well, see, this is, I'm not even I'm not even fucking up names. I'm just all right. These therapies are used for most mental disorders only after medication and psychotherapy have been tried and usually continue to be used alongside these treatments. Brain stimulation therapies act by activating or inhibiting the brain with electricity. The electricity is given directly through electrodes implanted in the brain or directly through electrodes placed on the scalp. The electricity can be induced by applying magnetic fields to the head. The brain stimul stimulation therapies with the largest bodies of evidence include electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, vagus nerve stimulation, magnetic seizure therapy, deep brain stimulation. ECT or RTMS are the most widely used brain stimulation therapies with ECT, electroconvulsive therapy having the longest history of use. The other therapies are newer and, in some cases, still considered experimental. Other brain stimulation therapies may also hold promise for treating specific mental disorders. ECT, RTMS, and VNS have authorization from the FDA to treat severe treatment-resistant depression. They can be effective for people who have, may have not been 
able to feel better with other treatments for whom medications cannot be safely and in severe cases where a rapid response is needed, such as when a person is catatonic, suicidal, or malnourished. Whereas ECT involves using electricity to induce seizures in our TMS, a magnet is used to activate the brain, unlike ECT, which in, in which stimulation is more generalized. In our TMS, the stimulation is targeted to a specific brain site. Now, as I'm saying these things, remember what I talked about right before, electrical convulsive therapy, ECT, repetitive transcranial magnetic, these are the things, but already I'm lost, so I recommend people just read the article, and it's hilarious. All right. Uh, and the stimulation is targeted for his brain cell. Both procedures are non-invasive and do not require surgery to perform. In contrast, VNS is usually a surgical procedure that involves implanting a device under the skin to activate the vagus nerve. Additional types of brain stimulation therapy are being investigated for treating depression and other mental disorders. Learn more about these brain stimulation therapies and there's a link to that. Talk to a healthcare provider and make sure you understand the potential benefits and risks before undergoing brain stimulation therapy. Alternative treatments. The FDA has not the FDA has not approved any natural products for depression. Although research is ongoing, some people use natural products, including vitamin D and the herbal dietary supplement St. John's Wort for depression. However, these products can come with risks. For instance, dietary supplements and natural products can limit the effectiveness of some medications or interact in dangerous or even life-threatening ways with them. Do not use vitamin D, St. John's Wort, or other dietary supplements and natural products without talking to a healthcare provider. Rigorous studies must be conducted to test whether these and other natural products are safe and effective. Daily morning light therapy is a common treatment choice for people with seasonal defective disorder. Affective disorder. Light therapy devices are much brighter than ordinary indoor lighting and considered safe, except for people with certain eye diseases or taking medications that increase sensitivity to sunlight. As with all interventions for depression eva evaluation, treatment, and follow-up by a healthcare provider are strongly recommended. Research into the potential role of light therapy in treating non-seasonal depression is ongoing. And, by the way, there is a growing uh, stud studies and research showing of how important um, psycho psilocybin is and mushrooms and microdosing, which I believe in time with ketamine, it was mentioned before, are going to be major breakthroughs in the future. How can I... Oh, did I, did I finish that? Yeah. How can I find help for depression? If you think you may have depression, stop by making an appointment to see a healthcare provider. This could be your primary care provider, a psychiatrist, psychologist, or social worker, or another provider who specializes in diagnosing and treating mental health conditions. Find tips to help prepare for and get the most out of your visit and information about getting help. These words are highlighted in blue. Once you enter their treatment, you should gradually start to feel better. Here are some other things you can do outside of treatment that may help you or a loved one during treatment for depression. Try to get physical activity. Just 30 minutes a day of walking can boost your mood. Try to maintain a regular bedtime and wake-up time. <laughs> Eat regular, healthy meals. <laughs> Break up large tasks into small ones. Do what you can as you can. Decide what must get done and what can wait. That's, that is super important. Try to connect with people. Talk with people you trust about how you are feeling. Delay making important decisions, such as getting married or divorced, or changing jobs until you feel better. Discuss decisions with people who know you well. Avoid using alcohol, nicotine, or drugs, including medications not prescribed for you. These are some important things. You know, we go through life with your friends and family, and you can see these things happen, and there's almost nothing you can do. Um, but these tips, they, they're helpful in that sense. And for me, the, where, I, where I am in my life, I can handle anything until too many things happen at once. So, for instance, if it's bad news or it's something that happens in life, it's usually a mild thing that I overcome. But when 
one, two, three, four, five things start happening in the same week, like I had last month, um, Nightmare Month, it really fucks you up. And for someone like me who, you know, basically doesn't go and treat, or that's part of the past, I have to bear down and get to work, so to speak. How can I find a clinical trial for depression? Clinical trials are research studies that look at new ways to prevent, detect, or treat diseases and conditions, including depression. The goal of a clinical trial is to determine if a new test or treatment works and is safe. Although people may benefit from being part of a clinical trial, they should know that the primary purpose is to gain new scientific knowledge so that others can be better helped in the future. Researchers at NIMH around the country conduct many studies with patients with depression and healthy volunteers. We have new and better treatment options today because of that, what clinical trials have uncovered. Talk to a healthcare provider about clinical trials, their benefits and risks, and whether one is right for you. This is super important. This is, this is why we're having breakthroughs in marijuana laws and you know, psilocybin with mushrooms and ketamine. For so long, we've treated so many things as a bad thing and known how, and we're starting to realize, well, these are things that could work. They're natural things around the world, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, clinical trials are super important and is what I would totally recommend people to get into. And remember, it's about helping people in the future also, leaving a legacy that you might have struggled really hard. Your life might have been filled with shit and you're 52 years old just realizing what a, you know, where your place is and how shitty things can be. But, knowing that you could have helped a new generation or the future of people. Like I said, I said in my other podcast, one day it'll be going to the doctor. He's going to take your blood and give you aspirin specifically to you, painkillers. Like it'll all be, and then who knows what it'll be like little nanobots going in your body and fixing things. And when we got the brain mapped and we're figuring things out, I think there is much hope for these things in the future. And as I go through all my mental health, um, mental disorders, over the next couple of weeks, a month, or whatever it takes, I hope it's clear that with, every, with everything that overlaps and the way things are, you can figure out a way to get help or to help others. Uh, it continues, so to learn more or find a study, visit clinical trials information for participants, and there's a whole list of um, places, and I recommend hitting these blue links. I'm going to put the article in my description. Where can I learn more about depression? Uh, so that was, how can I find a clinical trial for depression? And then it has all the list. And then where can I learn about depression? Free brochures and shareable resources. And there's a whole list here for everybody to go through. There's a, another list for federal resources, depression, mom's mental health matters. There's research and statistics where you can get the articles and all multimedia and i totally recommend everybody going talking and getting help this is the not the first because like i said a lot of my podcasts are always centered around science health and of course i do my tv and you know my movie stuff but every once in a while a person had a, a friend had a problem or something like that or like uh disassociative disorders and stuff like that i would do a podcast on it so it is things I have done in the past. But this I wanted to specifically target certain mental illnesses, mental disorders. You know, the five to nine that are most common, recommended. Get them on my site and my playlist. And again, I might continue doing these. This might be a, just a thing I do. But they might come an end to, you know, me putting videos out every week. And this is what I felt would be something that I would leave behind that I wouldn't have regrets for. So again, I will put the link to the article in my description. In, in my description, sometimes I forget, you know, whatever. You know, you guys see my symptoms are here. And again, I love you all. Get help. Help your friends. Be understanding. Know they love you. You love them. But there are, you know, genetic, biological. Like there's so many factors. 
what happens to me 12 13 might seem nonsense it might be seem like a, a pity part like oh stop it grow up what about other people who've had real serious trauma as a child and if mine started at 13 just realizing things and worrying what about the person child who was five years old and had trauma and serious trauma death family you know uh, car accidents whatever and when you're a child it affects the brain in profound ways we're finding out so it's also the degree of things you know bob when he was three years old came home and found his mom dead or his father or it was in a car accident he lost his parents is can be very different from joe who at 13 started noticing his mom mental illness and by 16 17 dropping out of school trying to help her like there are these there's a spectrum and no one is more deserving of treatment than other or your love and respect it's all the brain and i wish there comes a day where everybody takes a pill and by the way when i mean that it doesn't mean everybody becomes a carbon copy of everybody if there was a pill to take that made everybody synapses and turned everybody into a good beautiful person it wouldn't be all carbon copies you're all unique in your growth and your environment as you grow up your genetics your family it all makes this the ingredients for this the soup or the bread you're making and that is you so get help listen to the doctors when you can ask a friend i am here if anybody ever wants to shoot me a pm call me privately i wish everybody the best my best to you and yours take care